What we've been talking about, we, we went back to the case of the, of the uh, attack against President Clinton, uh, the Whitewater Affair, so-called, and showed that you have British newspapers and uh, a, new, a newspaper company run by the top ranks of British society that's also heavily involved with Israel and Zionists. It's all, all completely run by the British for purposes of stopping the United States from having any kind of initiative in the world that would that would get rid of this, this British party's power. Uh, you can take this back to what they did to set up Israel and Palestine as a Jewish state in the first place. What British objective was for that? We, we also went into the background of the people involved in the Hebron massacre. And we showed these exactly the same people. That these are the same people that ran organized crime in America. And then if you have to, to understand this, you have to look back in the 19th century, the previous century to our own century, and you will see that throughout the world, there was two main forces fighting each other, the British Empire and the United States. And the United States had its sympathizers in other countries, like in Japan, for example. There were people in Japan who said, well, why don't we try to imitate what the US did? Let's make a modern society. They actually had a revolution in Japan called the Meiji Restoration. How'd that start? And they wanted to modernize Japan. What happened is in the 1850s, America sent some ships over to Japan under Commodore Perry. And not the way the British would send ships. Now, this is the American system. They sent ships over there with a railroad, a telegraph set, and a lot of guns on it. Now, the British would send ships with guns on them, but not to give to the people. They'd send them there to shoot them, right? And so we sent a railroad, a telegraph, and a and guns. And we said, okay, these are what you will have if you get involved with Western technology. Now, you're going to need these because the British want to enslave you, and they're now bombing China to force them to have opium. We set up a treaty with Japan. And a guy came there as the first consul from the United States named Townsend Harris, right after that, to make this treaty. He was the inventor of City College of New York, a very distinguished Christian man. Went over there, made a treaty with them. No opium to be imported into Japan. Why? What's the U.S. interest in that? We don't want Japan to be subverted to the British, then the British are gonna, this evil empire is gonna run the whole place over there. We wanna have some allies. Therefore, we need free countries that are powerful. You got the idea? Is that the way George Bush thinks about the world? No, you can't have any free countries anywhere. They might get uppity. Who knows? What? Under George Bush, what's the theory? Just one second now. What is the theory of the United States with regard to the world for George Bush? What countries are our allies? Britain, what else? Britain. No other country. <laughs> no other country. Think about it. Is it Israel? No. Not really. He didn't care for Israel. You know, he did a lot of deals with Israel. He had gun running with Israel and so forth, right? Massive billions of dollars were sent. The only country in the world we actually sent foreign aid to was Israel. You have these guys saying, oh, let's stop giving out foreign aid. What country do we give foreign aid to? Every country gives more back to the international banks, except Israel. What do they do with the money? Buy guns. What do they do with the guns? Sell them to Central America or something, right? <laughs> and shoot the Arabs. But that's George Bush's idea of a world. That's the British idea of a world. What's Abraham Lincoln's idea of the world? To have nations. To have, to have nations, each nation to have its own, to mind its own business, but to have trade that's mutually beneficial. You can't have a powerful slave system in the world and have that work. Because if some country has the idea of having the cheapest possible labor, that will destabilize the entire world system. You have to stop that or you can't survive. You can't have freedom anywhere. <laughs>